I love that speech because I'm one of those sons of former slaves. And this kettle pot actually comes from the slaves in my family. They used it for cooking. They used it for washing clothes. But secretly, they used it for another reason. It's been passed down for many generations. Actually, I hadn't thought much about this pot until I went to a little conference years ago. And I heard a, a gentleman talking about prayer in the most intriguing way. He began talking about how we can agree with each other in prayer. Of course, when we agree in prayer, it creates this exponential release of God's presence and power in our life. One could put a thousand to flight. Two could put, what, 10,000 to flight. That's synergy when we agree together in prayer. But he said something that was so profound. He said this, not only can you agree in prayer with the person sitting next to you, you can also agree in prayer with the generation behind you. He was talking about how he was at his alma mater for this one school, and he's leading the student body there in prayer. And while he's leading them in prayer, he began to pray, and he heard the Lord say to him, I want you to come in agreement with the prayers of the founder of this school. And he said, okay, God, that man's dead. <laughs> he's been dead for quite a long time. I know you're not into talking to the dead. But then the Holy Spirit said to him, I didn't say agree with him. I said agree with his prayers. His prayers are still alive before my throne. There are things I promised this man in prayer that I want to release into this school right now, but I can't do it yet because I need this generation to come agree with that generation. I want to release the synergy of the ages. When he said that concept and I heard that, it reminded me of this pot and how it was used. Like I said, it was used by the slaves of my family. They used it for cooking. They used it for washing clothes, but it was passed down because secretly they used it for prayer. They were owned by a slave master there in Lake Providence, Louisiana, who would beat it for any reason. And praying was one of them. Back then, they wanted slaves to be Christians because they knew that Christian slaves made better workers. But they would pervert the gospel back then and say, slaves, be obedient to your masters if you want to go to heaven. And they want slaves to pray. The irony is that they didn't want slaves to pray because they felt like prayer would foster hope. They got hopeful. They felt like they would try to run away. Right? Other irony is that they, will, they didn't want slaves to read and write because, of course, if they read the scriptures and read the book of Exodus, they, they felt like they would try to fight for their freedom as well. And we know we're saved by grace through faith, not of works. It's the gift of God so that no one should boast. So it was against the law for them to read and write eventually. And then also it was, they were prohibited from praying because they didn't want any, any kind of hope for freedom. But listen, in spite of the cruelty and because of the love for Jesus, these folks in my family who passed down this pot, they decided to pray anyway. So what they would do is they would go into a barn late at night to make sure their prayer meeting wasn't seen. But to make sure it wasn't heard, they used this cast iron kettle pot. They would walk into the middle of the cabin and then they would take the kettle pot and they would turn it upside down and lay it flat on the cabin floor. They would then prop it up with rocks so it would be suspended off the ground about an inch or two. They would then prostrate themselves on the ground and put their lips in between the opening between the ground and the kettle so that the kettle pot muffled their voices as they prayed through the night. And the story they passed down with the pot is this, is that they didn't think they would see freedom in their time. So they prayed for the freedom of their children in the next generation. Well, one day freedom comes. There's this young teenage girl. She decides to keep this pot and that story in our family which is incredible, isn't it? 